So welcome to today's lecture uh, with its new and hopefully improved audio. And what I'd like to talk to you about is creating perspective views of your project. And really, uh, we've created some you know pretty interesting views, all orthographic though. Uh, even our 3D little house view, the default 3D view, if I click on that, um, it's an axonometric, right? It's not in perspective. So uh, let's create some floor, uh, some perspective views. And you have to go to your floor plan view. I'm going to start at the street level. Uh, and it's really pretty straightforward. Um, you can find the Create a Perspective button here on the View menu. Uh, and it's hidden under the little house, the default 3D view. If you look here, there's one for camera, OK? Um, you can also find that very same tool up here in the kind of quick access area of your screen. And of course, it, uh, like a lot of tools, it has a little video that will show you how it works. Um, but I'm making a little video to show you how it works. So you click the button, and uh, what you do, the uh, software uses the um, uh, kind of idea of a camera, and it even looks like a camera. And what you're going to do is place the camera somewhere, and that's your station point. Maybe I'll place it right here. And then as you drag out, you see a kind of giant triangle connected to your cursor. Um, and that's the cone of vision and the center of the field of view. There's kind of an X on my cursor. Um, one trick is make sure not to click in the middle of the plan, uh, because if you do, you won't see anything beyond where you click. It has kind of a depth cropping, okay? So I'm gonna click out here past the uh, front of the building. And when you do that, it automatically opens up a perspective view of your project. Now, Revit kind of defaults to a fairly narrow field of view. If you remember from SketchUp, the discussion of field of view, that's how wide from left to right you're seeing. Um, like other views in Revit, um, it has a crop region around it. And you can drag that crop region by just clicking and dragging on these uh, draggers on the grips. So you can kind of compose a much wider um, view, which is more typical of interiors, all right? And here you can see as I keep going, I'm trying to compose a view that's going to uh, show all the main elements of the space and hopefully not get too distorted. Now, uh, and that's basically all there is to it. You can go and create uh, perspectives of uh, other floor plans. Um, also, uh, you could go up to level two and do the same thing. Uh, just go click the camera tool, plant it, and then drag out that cone of vision. Okay. What you will see, by the way, as I stretch out the um, field of vision, if I go back to that level two site plan, I had the uh, camera selected. Okay. You can actually see the camera here in. Um, uh, the plan view, uh, and I can actually still grab it and move it. Um, but uh, what you will also notice is that the field of view has gotten much wider. And that's just because I've gone and I've stretched out the um, crop region for this particular view. Now you might say, well, that's all fine and dandy. Um, what else can I do with perspective views? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, perspective views, I'm going to... Uh, want to um, kind of modify the way these look. Right now, they are just what's called a hidden line view, which is to say it's basically white. Um, and anything solid blocks out stuff behind it. Now, there are other options um, as you go along. Uh, I'm going to just click on this little uh, visual style button down at the bottom of your screen. Looks like a sugar cube. Um, we're using hidden line. There's a couple of other ones. Uh, we could go with um, wireframe, which is kind of a cool view. Um, it's interesting to be able to see through objects. You can also go with a shaded view, which kind of starts to add colors. And I'm not so sure I'm excited about colors yet. We haven't learned how to do that. And you can see here there's a couple of other ones um, that also deal with colors. Again, until we apply materials, those aren't going to be very useful. So I'm just going to stick with hidden line. But what I will show you is there are a few fun things you can do to make this a little more um, interesting. Again, I'm going to click the little sugar cube for view options. And up top, there's a graphic display options uh, menu here that we can open. 
Um, and what this does, it has a number of different um, kind of features that we can turn on and off. Okay, now, first of all, there is an x-ray view uh, that we saw earlier where everything is transparent. You can actually force it to be a little transparent by just dragging this transparency button. And you see how things are a little transparent, but not totally. That's kind of a cool um, type of uh, design uh, for your drawing or effect. Sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes you can create some interesting effects um, or use it as a layer in, say, Photoshop when you're composing your drawing. Um, also, there's this smooth uh, lines with anti-aliasing. This is really great when you have curves. Um, that's a good one to turn on. We won't see any difference here because we don't really have any curves. Um, there's other ones. Um, cast shadows. If I turn that on and hit apply, what you'll see when my computer's done thinking about it is some shadows show up kind of by the front window. Oh, now in this case, it looks like it's too early in the morning for the sun to come directly in my space. So I'm not even getting shadows in here just now. So sometimes that's not a great one for interiors, but this one, the ambient shadows, does actually look pretty nice sometimes. I'll check that. And what you'll see, it kind of adds um, a little sense of uh, gradient along most surfaces. Okay, so that's a fun one to fiddle around with. Uh, there's a couple other ones in here. Um, sketchy lines is an, is one that I, you know, honestly, I don't like the way they look as uh, much as I do with SketchUp. Um, but it is one that you can fiddle around with. I'll drag those up. And of course, it, depending on how much detail you have in your drawing, um, let me just click OK, zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, depending on how much detail you have in your drawing, uh, this can be a more or less successful um, type of style. This isn't too bad. There's not a huge amount of detail in this particular drawing either. Okay, so uh, that's uh, a couple of graphic display options um, for you to fiddle around with. Um, there's a couple of others, um, including uh, depth queuing, but it won't work with um, sketchy lines on, um, so we won't uh, look at that. And then lighting, uh, which only works if you have uh, lighting other than the sun um, in your view. Um, so if we do have some electric lighting, we can we can certainly amp up that. Um, and you can see here there's a balance between um, uh, ambient sun and shadows that you can fiddle around with. Okay. Finally, uh, photographic exposure and uh, background. These are places where you can add um, things like um, an image outside of the window. Um, here, let's see what we get when we do a gradient. Okay, and a lot, sometimes this will depend on the direction you're facing, but this is kind of nice. Um, you see here how it puts a, a horizon line um, with a gradient on it, and you can, you can fiddle around with the colors. Okay, you can even save this as a view template if you like it. And remember we were using view templates to switch different uh, plans and elevations to have uh, similar graphical qualities. Well, you can make other drawings have this same uh, graphical quality. Yeah, and that's important if you've spent, you know, kind of a lot, of little time tweaking the view. Okay, uh, by the way, when you um, have done something like this, if you come back and change it to hidden line, it will retain most of the features, but not all. Some will get turned off. So if you want to kind of turn it back off, you can either apply um, a default template to it, um, or you can go back to your graphic display options, and then you can you can start undoing uh, some of the things. What did we turn on? Oh, yeah, sketchy lines I think we turned on, and uh, ambient shadows. Here, I'll just turn the sketchy lines on. I like the SketchUp ones better myself, but that's my own personal preference. Anyway, um, there are a few other things to consider when you are looking at a perspective. Uh, one of them is, what do you do when something is in the way of your perspective? Um, it's basically very similar to SketchUp in that um, you can take the object, the offending object, uh, select it in perspective view. And by the way, when you select things in perspective view, there are properties which are available. Not all. You can't click and drag on it usually um, like you can in plan. However, you can modify dimensions in a number of ways. Anyway, the other thing you can do, you can either hide it so it completely goes away, uh, which is a fun thing to do, um, or you can use this override graphics in view 
by element. If you remember, we've used that before with our interior elevations. And now when we do that, there are a couple of things. We could make it invisible, but we could also make it semi-transparent. And sometimes that's a nice look when you want to keep an element for context, but you don't want it to um, be in the way. I still want to see the bar, and I'd like to know that it's near that column, but I don't want the column to block our view. So there you go. There's some basics of perspective drawings. Okay. There are a few other things that you can do if you want to sharpen things up. They don't always work great, but uh, one thing is that SketchUp is not really too sporty when it comes to line weights. Um, but uh, fortunately, there is a tool on the Modify tab, and it is called the Line Weight Tool, or Line Work, excuse me. Um, if you click that tool, you can change the line type of any object that Revit thinks it can handle. <laughs> so it won't work guaranteed for everything. But for instance, the major elements in a space um, want to have a heavy line weight. And remember, you always need three different line weights. Sometimes that's a little difficult to achieve in a computer program. So um, Revit can see how I can make the column lines look a little bit darker. I think that kind of sharpens it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, in fact, you can even create your own custom line types um, if you're so inclined. Uh, unfortunately, what Revit will do sometimes when you click a line that is um, hidden by some other element, if you use the line work tool, you see how here I clicked on this line and it, it kind of unhides it. Um, so you'll want to be careful and not do that. Um, but what it does mean is that it, it's going to give you problems changing the line weight of certain elements. Okay, but uh, sometimes just a few lines to give yourself a little bit of definition can be very handy. All right, so uh, that is basically uh, it for the simple drawing of perspectives. What I'd like you to do is put those perspective views on a new sheet. Oh, and whoops, I have an extra sheet here. Um, I'm going to just delete that so that I can show you how to make a new sheet. Uh, and to make a new sheet, you right click on where it says sheets and choose, you guessed it, new sheet. Uh, and it will um, ask you what title block do you want to use. Um, and uh, obviously, if you've created your own custom title block, it will recognize that and use that one. So I'll use that one. Um, oh, and I still want to get an A, apparently. Uh, to draw uh, these perspectives, uh, drag these perspectives onto your um, sheet, it's pretty easy. You just click and drag like you did before. And you can see they come in as created. And I'll drag this other one in here. Now, you might say, but wait a second. I want to fill the sheet with these drawings. Oh, and I didn't change the properties of that one. Um, how do I make these bigger? There's no way to click and drag on it. Well, let's go back to the perspective view and zoom out a little bit and grab the uh, crop region for the uh, perspective just by clicking on it using the modify tool. What you'll see when you do that, there is the size crop uh, option which shows up here. This will tell you how big Revit thinks the image is. Okay, And if you want, you can change those numbers. There's nothing magical about them. The trick is make sure that you, once you've got it composed the way you want, that you lock the scale so that it doesn't change the proportions that you've created. So uh, if I want to make this, say, 24 inches, when I change that number, it will change the other one. Okay, And I'll click Apply and OK. And it doesn't look any different. But now when I go to the sheet, just go down to, oh, went too far. Uh, when I go down to my sheet, you should see the image uh, automatically resize on the sheet um, because changing that crop region size will change the size that Revit thinks the drawing is. Uh, of course, now I have to go and figure out where that um, uh, title is. Oh, it's underneath there, so I'll have to move all this out of the way to uh, grab it. Now, if you decide that you don't like the uh, perspective view that you have, you can always go back to that perspective view. And of course, this is 
um, true of all these programs that use viewports. If you modify this view, and I could say click and drag um, while holding down a shift, uh, I'll click and drag my scroll wheel and it orbits the model, um, just like uh, we do with our axonometric view. I could also use my steering wheel here to um, you know, change the view in any number of ways, um, including um, the usual look around, pan, center, walk, all the tools that we um, have seen in other programs. This little view um, steering wheel here, this is a great way to modify your perspectives. It's so um, handy. Orbit is, of course, the same as when you hold down shift and click and drag your scroll wheel. Okay, so this view um, uh, steering wheel is so handy. The other thing is, um, if you make some horrible mistake, you can click and drag on rewind, and it will go backwards to um, however far back you want. You see how it highlights wherever you were. Um, so you can kind of make up for some real bad mistakes um, just by uh, using the steering wheel rewind feature. Any changes that you make here will show up on your sheet. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is uh, put together a sheet of uh, perspectives, at least two, and I'd like you to modify the um, view properties so that you can uh, get some nice effects. I would recommend um, the ones here, but um, by all means, experiment um, with them. If you like the sketchy view, uh, by all means, put that in. Um, and then make the two of them the same. I would also ask that you make the two of them uh, 24 inches uh, wide, um, at least so that they fit um, in your, on your sheet here. Um, if you have to uh, modify your title block or whatever so that they fit in, um, by all means do that.